Another case of the Philippine Sea effect as we go ahead into the morning of the 18th of April 2021. I always note the date because these forecasts can change from day to day. But look at this. My goodness. Super Typhoon Surige, also known as Bising, being estimated at a Category 5 intensity. That is the upper portion of the scale here. Pressure down the 900 hectopascals. I mean, this... Uh, I said it in my last update, even is still so here as we go ahead into your Sunday morning. This is a textbook storm. If you look up a picture of a typhoon in a textbook, this is what you're going to see here. Clear and defined eye, radio outflow towards the north and towards the south. This storm system is no joke. And if this was coming on shore right this second, this would be catastrophic damage right around that center of circulation. The good news if there is any here, is the fact that it does look more and more like this is going to stay well offshore as far as that intercore of Category 5 destructive winds, which, my goodness, it makes all the difference. And uh, it, you really got to be thankful for that. The thing is, we still got the outer rain bands. This is a massive storm system. So imagine if we had the center line coming on shore for like a Category 1 or a tropical storm type system, because that's going to be the type of impacts all along the east coast of Sumar, uh, across southeastern Luzon, because those outer rain bands from this very potent storm system are impacting you. We're talking about heavy rainfall already moving on shore, thunderstorms, and even that possibility of a few tornadoes spinning up in some of those outer rain bands due to friction as this moves over land. So uh, still a dangerous storm system. I know the center line and i'll show it to you in a second it's going to be offshore i want to make that clear but we still have the outer bank rain bands to deal with this is one thing i do want to show you though the rapid intensification of this system over the course of the last 24 to 48 hours we had a tropical storm which the threshold's right about there that was back on the 15th as we went ahead through the 16th and my goodness heading into the 17th look at this it just exploded once it pushed past Palau, and I'm happy it at least exploded just after it moved past Palau because the Republic of Palau already suffered severe damage from the storm system. They would have just been devastated and still intensifying. Remember, Dvorak analysis, unfortunately, in the Western Pacific, we do not have the luxury of typhoon or hurricane hunters. We don't have planes flying in these to get measurements. So we look at satellite imagery from past storms. This is just a really rough overview of it. From past storms, what we know about them, and then we kind of get a good idea of the intensity of these storms. Microwave imagery really shows that clear and defined eye. By the way, if you were asking what plow is or where that is, that's right there uh, after the storm pushed by. You can see that eye just absolutely wrapping up. Actually going through an EWRC or an eye wall replacement cycle. And you see this when the inner eye wall, see how tight it is? Then watch how an outer eye wall starts to form around it. That kind of levels out the intensity a little bit when you start to see that happen. But it does expand the wind field near the center of circulation. But let's let's get to the track. It's all the data you wanna know is it gonna hit you. And like I said, more and more of the data continues to show the center of that core of catastrophic type conditions remaining offshore. We're already seeing this move north, northwest, and it should continue on that northerly projection. I know the last few days I've been saying, watch that western side of the cone of air. One main reason for that was that ridge was starting to weaken, and plus the ECMWF model guidance was showing this tracking just a bit further west. But at least at this time, it does look like it is shifting back towards the east. This is actually the official tracks from multiple agencies. Remember in the Western Pacific too, uh, for people that are watching from overseas, the Western Pacific actually has multiple agencies warning on the same storm system. JMA is the official one. That is the equivalent of the National Hurricane Center in the Western Pacific. But if you notice, I always use Pegasus when I'm near the Philippines because the Philippines, their media, everybody there does not use JMA. Uh, and, and then you're talking about the U.S., uh, they actually use JTWC, which is out there in Guam. The National Weather Service uses them. I got HKO. The closest one is uh, Taiwan uh, in there in the green, the CWB. And overall, though, all the agencies do keep this storm system offshore. But like I said, the outer rain bands still are a problem. Signal Force 2 has been issued for the entire island 
of Samar and also Captain Duanas as the storm system skirts on by. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you go up to a Signal Force 3, in my opinion, because of the potency of this storm system and those outer rain bands. So what's steering it towards the north? And I've been mentioning this a few times, is the fact that this is trying to climb north towards a trough. We have the high pressure ridge located out here towards the west, another one towards the east. These storms no matter how strong they are, they want to run to areas of lower pressure. That's basically, they, they just kind of flow through our atmosphere. I know it's a monster of a storm. It looks more like just a plow, but in fact, it's sailing along here and it's trying to sail in between those and get picked up by this deep trough moving in out of Japan. So, you know, you guys think this weather system over Japan for kind of eroding that ridge just enough to allow this to pull towards the north here. And you can already see kind of that shear line setting up with the interaction. Watch this, follow the clouds right back like that. And you can see that shear line interaction that's going to help hook this guy and pull him towards the north and eventually back towards the north and east. With the jet stream here, it should keep it south of Okinawa as well. And here's a look at the model forecast. This is the ECMWF. This is the model that has been persistent on landfall. This was the last holdout and it has shifted further towards the east. But still, uh, even in this scenario, close enough for tropical storm typhoon strength gust across Captain Duanas, Eastern Samar, but the good news, it does spare uh, much of mainland Luzon back here towards north, I shouldn't say mainland, but central and northern Luzon. Uh, it does give you guys a little bit of a break, but still, you know, a tropical storm strength gusts are definitely possible up in that area over, you know, 50, 60, 70 kilometers per hour. Close enough for impacts. That's the main point I want you to take away from this. I know we talk about that center line. A lot of people look at that and they go, whew, and then they'll write in be like, oh my goodness, wh what happened? <laughs> yeah, these storms are big and the outer rain bands can catch people off guard. And that's my second main point with these damaging winds and that flood threat. So basically everywhere here in red, yeah, tropical storm conditions, possible, possible typhoon conditions along the immediate coastal line areas, but those inland areas with those rain bands are definitely gonna be an issue. And actually this is from the ECLBWF, and this is really useful. This big old blob here, this actually shows the extent that model is depicting for tropical storm strength winds not typhoon but 34 knots or greater about 65 kilometers per hour see the extent here still kind of taking up the entire eastern seaboard of Visayas and eastern Luzon and even the northern coast I think this is a little bit out of the question but you know maybe some of the winds wrapping around still could be possible along the northern and western periphery there's a look at the extended outlook this is going to recurve and towards towards the north and east so uh, for those of you across the southern Japanese islands, over through Taiwan, I know a lot of you have been concerned about this because, yeah, it's turning north and it looks like it's going to come right at you. Well, uh, it does look like with this type of recurve scenario, it's going to smack the jet stream and just get a move on and get on out of there. So hopefully once it passes the Philippines, we start to talk less and less about direct landmass impacts. You're still going to see waves out there in Okinawa, though. Hey, how about uh, everybody who's been helping me out on Patreon? I still have to update this because I did get some new members over the course of the past 24 hours. I truly, truly appreciate it. Just got so many other things going on between this and I'm also on TV locally in Jacksonville, Florida. If any of you are from that area, you probably have seen me on the weekends and I have to uh, between shows because I'm doing double shifts this weekend uh, with that. Uh, I try to kick these out because this is very important and uh, I know a lot of people find it useful. But hey, if you want to help make it so I can keep on doing these, if I get the Patreon enough, I can do this solely and, you know, we can have all the updates you want. But uh, that's a dream. Anyways, let's take a look at the the, the, the membership cost here, 2 6 or $10. You know, every bit does help and it helps so I can uh, continue making these updates at the very least because the graphics are not free that I use now. But I want to upgrade them and make them that much better. You know, every dollar people submit, I, I'm going to put it back into the system here. I'm looking at a new computer, and I want to get these TV-level graphics. That actually has, this is Metro Weather from New Zealand, by the way, and they're, one, they're the only TV-level graphic that uh, digest Pegasa data into it, as well as JMA data. Most of them just use JTWC. Uh, or the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. And, you know, yeah, JWC is great. It's not what everybody uses out here. So it's it's definitely a great system. And I'm going to try to get that sooner than later. Let's just say that. Hey, 
If you stayed all the way after my little ramble there, thank you very much. I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. That's, that's great for the algorithm on these videos. It gets them shared out more and hopefully it advises people. Because my biggest concern, at least at this time with this storm, is the fact that it, it, it sounds wrong to say it this way. And I, I got to put my words right, but it is the fact that it is staying offshore. And that center line is staying about 200 kilometers east of Luzon, which is fantastic news. But a lot of people might look at that and go, well, we're good. I'm going to the beach. I don't know. what, But that can catch people off guard. And that's definitely still a, a troublesome part of this storm system. Anyways, hey, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please let me know down below. You can check out our Patreon or westernpacificweather.com. I've actually been posting some updates there. Not as much as I should, but it is there just as a resource. All the links I use for informational purposes in this video are actually found at westernpacificweather.com at the bottom of the page. I put all my, it's basically my entire weather favorites is there as well. All right, anyways, thanks for watching and stay safe out there.